Alrighty, well, uh, cast time once again, and uh, I'm gonna forewarn everybody right now. Oh, this is my uh, this is my second attempt. Uh, it just things really got off on the wrong foot. Um, just lots of hemming and hawing, and not to mention uh, I was still waiting for the copyright checks on some of my uh, on some of my videos. So, so, and YouTube was just on wall on me. So, but finally, um. One of them came back and it was good to go. It's gonna be a uh, Gildan Island friend. So just some more uh, ambience and then kind of like usual. And apparently, apparently it's on Sundays when this happens. Um, mo the the music channels that I subscribe to, they um they usually put their music. They usually put all their albums out on Sundays. So I'm I'm being given like a whole bunch of albums at once. So, and I gotta go through them all and listen to them and, you know, if they're, if they're cast worthy, then I'll do copyright checks on them and stuff like that, so. And then, um, which 90% of them came back copyrighted except for, uh, this album and one other. And like I said, I was, uh, I was waiting for them to come back, so I'm a little bit late making this cast. Um, I started at about 11.45, it's 11.49 p.m. right now. So, but like I said, um, this album here is Gildan Island Friend. So, let's go to wander back. But, uh, secondly, um, I've got a really big canker sore in my lower lip. It's come to full fruition, so it hurts like hell. So, I'm having a very hard time talking right now. something else I was wanting to say before I get started. Oh, just other than the fact that this is my second attempt making this. So, oh, and um, when putting this together, um, I was having it. OBS was being really stubborn with me. I'm trying to like, you know, move and resize, uh, you know, overlays and pictures and stuff like that. And it wasn't cooperating with me. So if parts of my cast seem really off, that's probably why. I I forgot to I forgot to set something back the way it was supposed to be or whatever. But you, you get you get the idea. So. But anyway, um, just starting off. Uh, just like yesterday, I started my stream with uh, Idle Champs. Um, just played it for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, just you know, just listened to a few podcasts. Uh, Triple KO, just like yesterday. Um, one of the D&D &D podcasts, again, just like yesterday, so, um, but, um, uh, then everything was pretty much honky-dory until, until I moved over to Bloons Tower Defense 6, um, things went alright, but, uh, kind of like has happened before, the, the pay-to-win posse, uh, for lack of a better phrase, decided to come by. Um, there are a couple of my viewers that came on. Um, I did a co-op map with them as they proceeded to basically, basically hack the game. Um, I ended up with like, what's basically infinite money. And after which they proceeded to just start throwing a shit ton of stuff on the screen. Um, especially toward, especially towards the end of this run, it became a slideshow because of all the action going on. So, yeah, de definitely not a fun time. But like I said, um, BDD6, it started out all right. These guys show up and just made a total mess of things. And then on top of that, um, for the first time ever, someone decided to basically do an um, attempted identity theft. Um, he took a screenshot of me streaming and decided to use it as his profile pic. Oh, and this is on Discord, by the way. Uh, and then, um, but to, to this guy's credit, he's total, total props to him doing this, but, uh, he actually let me know what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, somebody, hey, someone's using your, somebody's using your, uh, using your likeness in their profile pic, you know, and all that, and, um, 
looked it up and, you know, just... Eventually, it got... I, we man I managed to pin down the guy's ide identity and um, ended up reporting it. Um, I got an email saying that it did reach him, but I guess because they're so inundated with traffic that it's going to be a while until until I get a response from him. So. So, but otherwise, um, after all that, just basically, basically, uh, stressing out for the rest of the evening. Like I said, um, I can't recall except maybe one other time when, uh, when I was buying stuff from Walmart.com did my, uh, my credit card number gets stolen, but luckily, the bank I go to, they have like a, like a transaction protection mechanism, like whatever, uh, whenever a transaction occurs that I don't normally get, the bank kicks in and blocks it. So, and then I'll get all, I'll get some emails, you know, saying what happened and stuff. But aside from that, this is only the second time that someone tried to steal my identity. Um, but again, kind of, kind of luckily, one, again, one of my, uh, one of my viewers told me about this. So, again, kudos to him for doing that. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, and then, uh, on the other hand, <laughs> hey, thanks for the compliment. But, uh, on the other hand, too, you know, who knows what kind of shit this guy could have pulled. You know, have him, you know having my likeness here, you know, you know, started making death threats or whatnot. But, like I said, um, I did manage to get a hold of, uh, customer support on Discord, told them what was going on. Um, I still have to, I'm still waiting on a response from them. But, yeah, otherwise, I pretty much spent, uh, most of the evening just kind of stressed out over that. And then on top of that, um, going forward, um, Balloons Tower Defense 6 is pretty much off the table right now. So, um, either my whole entire sessions are going to be idle champs, or if I can find, uh, find something else to play along with idle champs, I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to abstain from, uh, from Bloons Tower Defense 6 for a while. Jesus, it, seems to, it seems to be where all the nasty shit's happening. Like I said, this is the, this is the second occasion where, where we had a, a pay-to-win people in our group. So. Ugh, the canker sore is driving me freaking nuts, too. But otherwise, one other thing that did happen this evening is uh, a documentary came up on my YouTube recommendations. Um, it's a documentary about, they're called Hikomori. Um, basically, how can I explain it? People that, people that made, they, they made a, they made a lifestyle out of being a loner. I think there was a better, there was a, a better, better way than it a better way of me explaining it, but it just, it's like they made, uh, they made the loner, I don't want to say class, but they made lonerism as a lifestyle. You know, they're basically hermits, they're, they're shacking up in, in their apartment, or in, like, they're like, shutting like, you know, like all contact from people, that kind of thing, but, um, but yeah, I I watched I watched this. It's got to be one of the best documentaries I've seen in a while. Um, and totally relatable. I think uh, if not if I hadn't discovered uh, streaming and content creating, this had been me. Um, had I not as you know had I not have start had I not have discovered uh discovered people like Henry Rollins and uh, Jessica Wildfire. 
uh, two of my favorite authors. And this would probably be me. And they're both of them are kind of loners themselves. Like one's a one's a Rollins is a singer, writer, um, spoken word performer. Um, Jessica Wapar is a I think she's a college professor. Um, and another author. So, but I mean, like you know, had I not have discovered these things. This had been me. I'd been shacked up in my apartment, like no contact whatsoever with the outside world. So glad I discovered the shit I did. But again, like I said, though, this is probably one of the better documentaries I've seen. And um, I'm kind of ignorant of uh, Japanese culture. Um, last I checked, I don't. It doesn't seem to be the serious epidemic here in America that it is in Japan. Like, I don't, because other, I mean, I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen other documentaries about this before, um, but they all seem to be centered in, J in Japan, so it seems they, they take a bigger issue with this. Something else I was wanting to say about that. Oh yeah, and there was a some some odd years ago, there was an actual game about this. It was on a Alpha Beta Gamer, one of my one of my favorite channels. But yeah, they did a game on this, and I'm like, yep, yep, that's them. And to a lesser extent, me. Yep. So, but yeah, def definitely like that video. I've tried watching it recently, but uh. I'm at a point where if a, if a game they're showcasing has really small text, it's I can't do it. it and I don't maybe uh maybe because back in the day when I was uh when I wasn't when all of my media entertainment wasn't in my living room like I like I used to sit in my bedroom on a computer desk, you know, and all that where I had the had the computer screen like right in my face. I had an easier time watching, you know, watching these videos, but I do everything out of my living room now. My TV is a is a fair distance away from me, so I have a hard time handling games that have really small text because I basically have to squint in order to read it. And then um. And one other thing that uh that struck me about this documentary though, the narrator keeps talking about about these uh Hikomori deaths that are that are hap that uh it took decades. That was a word that he kept bringing up, decades. Like it just wasn't it wasn't like, you know, some trauma happened to these guys and then they hole up in their in their house or apartment, they die in two weeks. No, it like it took it took many decades for for them to die of starvation. I think that's the usual cause. Like they just starve themselves to death. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. So, and then um, and then that was that was something else too. I know um. Uh, one example I saw, like, after this guy died, they actually went into his apartment covered with trash. Just garbage all over the place. And, um, there was a, there was a chapter in one of my favorite books, uh, Mop Men, uh, Inside the World of Crime Scene Cleaners. I actually, I actually kind of talked about this in one of my recent casts, but, uh, the, the guy that this guy was, uh, that the author was interviewing, um, he started, he started his own company, crime scene cleaners and he's probably one of the biggest assholes you'll ever meet um I don't want to go into too much detail but I, I pretty much said my piece uh, back then so short answer cut the guy a little bit of slack but not too much so but he was but I, yeah but uh, in this book they were talking about just that there was a um I think he said the trash hub uh, the trash got more and more built up the deeper you went into this guy's house 
like at first, you know, there's like, you know, garbage bags, you know, ready to be brought out, or full garbage bags, excuse me, but at some point in, when you go up further into this house, he, at some point he just said, fuck it, and just started, leave, just started leaving trash on the floor. Like, he didn't even bother, like, bagging it up and taking it out or anything like that, just on the floor. So, and then eventually, where the trash was the thickest, like, in his bedroom, there he lay, just laid there dead. Um, they didn't say why, I, I can't remember what it was, but I'll bet that, um, in this documentary here, that's, I'll bet that's what happened. Like, uh, he was, they found the body, like, just buried under this huge heap of trash, because... The way the crime scene cleaners guy put it, Neil, that's his name, Neil Smither. Um, but the way Neil put it, it's pretty much a mental health issue. It just gets to a point where he's so it he's so afraid of uh, of any kind of any kind of social interaction. They're so scared of it that they don't eat, they don't they literally do not want to go outside of the house. Um, the the self esteem get so low that they're um that they're afraid of scaring other people that was it they don't want to they don't want to scare the shit out of anybody else because they know they themselves know that they have mental issues so they pull up in their house um as far as how they get their food and stuff like that or like like i said a few minutes ago um at least as far as this particular documentary goes they're all dying from starvation. So it's like they literally do not want to go out. Like, again, it, just like Neil said, they're they're scared to death of uh, scaring other people. Because again, they know they have issues. And then um, and on the other hand too, um, I don't remember which Henry Rollins book this was. But he's, he wrote that um, he lost a lot of his friends due to this as well. It, but it was more of a, I want to say it's more, more high self-esteem than low self-esteem. With them, they, they saw their life stretched out in front of them. They saw that there was nothing more to their life than just this. So, they, because, uh, you know, they want to, they basically want to go out with a bang. They started, they started doing all the drugs they could get their hands on, uh, you know, not giving two shits about their life, you know, just, you know, their whole life. This is jackass. That, you know, that's them. They're just all out crazy, you know. Basically, again, they wanna, they wanna die with a smile on their face. So if only a, if only a fleeting one. They're basically they're, they're trying to run off the clock, as uh, I think I think Homer Simpson once put it. They're just looking for a way to run off the clock. So. Oh, and then something else uh, about the um about the other guy too. Um, when when Neil was uh, doing the uh, the body cleanup and all that. Um. I guess uh, a couple of this guy's relatives. I know they were both uh they were both old women. Um they were hanging around the house. Um I think they were asking Neil, you know, like how long is you know, how long is this gonna take? Um, can we go into this room or I I don't remember the exact words that they said, but basically they gave Neil the impression that they were gonna loot him. That they were gonna loot the basically gonna loot his corpse. Um I wish I could remember what it was ex that exactly what they said, but basically, the basic premise: they were gonna rob him, and I think they were asking Neil, "How long is it gonna take for him to clean the body up, or how long is he gonna be in the house?" He probably said something like, "Oh, a couple hours, then I'll be out." So I guess he actually hung out outside the house waiting for him to get done. Once he left, they probably charged right in, started looking for the safe, they started looking for deposit boxes, anything, what, any box with a lock on it, they were probably going to try to break open and grab the contents, you know, inside and all that. So, 
So again, maybe, you know, maybe this person that decided to become a recluse, maybe he, maybe he knew this, knew all along that that these were the, the that they were these kind of people. So, you know, they saw something about the world, something about society that made them say, "Fuck it, there ain't nothing here for me." But I kind of a kind of a re, kind of a recap. Um, I mean, excellent documentary. I plan on watching the rest of it. Um, and uh, had I not had I not have discovered uh, streaming and uh, content creation, um, I probably would have met the same fate as well. You know, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm I'm no socialite. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm still. I still try to keep people at arm's length. You know. Yeah, I gotta do some more. I gotta take another drink. This canker sore is fucking killing me. You know, but. You know, but I mean, you know, I, like I said, I don't, I don't want to go out like this, though. Where, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to die in a heap of garbage, you know. You know, I still want to keep, you know, some kind of, some kind of social interaction, some kind of contact with the outside world. But, at the same time, I'm, I'm avoiding the fucking mainstream like the plague, though. But like I said, I'll bet that's a, I'll bet that's a, one of the biggest reasons why hikomoris are the way they are. They see, you know, they see society the way it is, and they want no part of it. You know, they see that things aren't going to get better. No matter what people say, it's things aren't going to get better. If anything, it's going to get worse. And again, they want no part of it. I think uh, Henry Rollins was saying the same thing about some of his friends that died. They saw that same thing too. They want nothing to do with this world, so. At the same, you know, you know, at the same time, uh, suicide, they're probably above it. Um, usually suicide is too, uh, egotistical. And especially when, especially when you consider some of the ways in which they die. You know, here I go, off on another tangent. Was going to try to close off this, uh, video since my canker sore is really bothering me, but nope. Because I'm being dragged along. Um. But yeah, I think um, Neil was saying this. Neil and um, I don't know the author of the Lotman book, but I think they were saying the same thing too. Suicide, generally speaking, is uh, is basically an egotistical act, especially if you don't write a note. I think um, I think they were saying that somewhere in that book too. Like, if you don't if you don't at least write a suicide note, you know, then yeah, it's just basic. It's just flat out narcissistic. So, but for some reason, these uh, hikos, they, they're, I'm thinking they're, uh, I'm get, thinking they're above suicide, like just suddenly blowing their heads off with a shotgun, you know, that kind of thing, but something keeps, you know, they'd rather, they'd rather run out the clock than end the game or, you know, leave the field injured, I guess. So, but like I said, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but if not for uh, if not for content creation, if not for the um, if not for the authors whose books I read, I mean, I'd have probably met the same fate as these guys too. Just hold myself in my apartment and run off the clock. So, And then, I don't want to tarry too long in this. Um, I do need to kind of, here, let me, let me go over here real quick. Okay, so this is going to be my behind the scenes part. This is where um, I talk about, uh, I talk about the actual act of content creation, or usually if I learn something, I'll, uh, I'll talk about it here. So, 
I'm going to be talking about some aspect of me making these cast videos, so if a sort of kind of spoiler alert, if you don't want this kind of thing, then you probably want to go ahead and stop watching now. So, but I do, I do kind of need to set this up a bit. Um, I discovered a new website. I can, uh, So, I'm still kind of working on it. I need to kind of... Yeah, here it is. Okay, so... I discovered a new website. It's, uh... For those that saw my, uh... My other, uh, behind-the-scenes... Part of one of my other cast videos. I can't remember which one it was, but... I recently discovered a way to make your images transparent. But, um, so, but at that time, at the time I said that, the only way I could do it was to, I had to actually, uh, save, save the image straight off of the Google image search. But now I found a way to, you know, just, you know, like whatever image I want to make, want to make on my paint program, I can now simply, well, I can now upload it here to remove BG. It removes the background. In fact, let me, um, let me go ahead and try it. Um, upload image. Oh, yeah, here is a, here is an image that didn't make it. Uh, Fruit of the Loom. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I think this this already was a transparent image. So There we go. That's all you had to do. So and it automatically makes the image transparent for you. So I can use pretty much any image I have on my hard drive, upload it to this and it'll make it a transparent one. So now I'm not restricted to literally having to save an image off of Google Images, save it off of there, or have to, have to actually type down Botman transparent, you know, hunt down a transparent image from there. I could just, I could just, uh, sketch it straight off my hard drive. So, cool discovery. So, now, let's just, I think you could do it like this. Save image as Yeah, and a, a couple other images that didn't. Yeah, a couple other images that didn't make it. I don't know if you can see it. Was going to try to put canker sore image in there, but I couldn't get it to work. Um, was going to just take the uh, the fruit part of the Fruit of the Loom logo, put it, put it in front of the canker sore. So when I say, my canker sore has come to fruit has come to full fruition, then pop that up. Here, let's go ahead and save it. And then, I'll just go ahead and do this. And there we are. Just got to turn it on. Transparent image. So, Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good. Um, I need to, I need to kind of rest my lower lip because my canker sore is driving me up a freaking wall right now. So, so sorry if I sound a little tongue-tied or, you know, vocally impaired, I guess would be the phrase I'm looking for. Um, I probably didn't make, I probably didn't make a, make, I probably didn't make sense in some parts, but again, it's, I'm being very distracted here. I'll probably put that on my YouTube title as well, just to kind of warn people ahead of time. So, but otherwise, I'm um, just going to go ahead and call it good here. Um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, but until then.
Thanks again for coming by, and see you all next time. Bye now.